live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Welcome back, everyone. We're live here in Las Vegas for VMworld 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. It's our seventh year at VMworld, and I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE. And I'm here with John Troyer, my co-host, CEO of Tech Reckoning. This is the first year we're going into the community and going and getting co-hosts who know the material, or who are in the community, and help us analyze and break down all the coverage. And I'm here with our next guest, Nelson Nahum, who's the CEO of Zadar Storage. Welcome back, great to see you. Yeah, great to see you too. I'm really excited that you're here today because you guys make a product, yeah. um, cloud storage, I'm not saying cloud storage, but storage for the cloud, that essentially is kind of the same position that VMware's talking about. <laughs> you know, one cl multiple clouds, anywhere, anytime, workloads. Um, so let's, let's get into it. So, but you're shipping your product. Yeah, I, I, I like a quick update on Zadara. Yeah, so I like the presentation from Pat because he was saying in 2020 what is going to happen. But we are doing this today and we took a really good position in the market and especially in storage as a service, enterprise storage as a service, either public cloud, private cloud, but consumption, uh, pure consumption, zero capex, uh, actually lowering the opex of, of the system. Yeah. You guys have an interesting solution. We talked about it last time on the Cube. Go the, you go to uh, youtube.com, so Silicon Angle, and check out the last interviews. But I want you to take a minute, Nelson, to explain quickly what you guys do and why it's so relevant right now. Yeah, we, uh, again, we do enterprise storage as a service. And when we say enterprise storage, it's uh, primary and secondary storage with the same capabilities that you will find in traditional storage arrays. But because it's coming from a multi-tenant cloud, uh, this can be provisioned as a service in one minute. Uh, customer pay only for the usage. And we can do this uh, in the, either the public cloud, we are connected to Amazon and Azure. You, we can do in private cloud, that means we ship the equipment to the customer data center. Customer don't need to pay for the storage upfront, don't need to pay the equipment. We manage everything remotely. Yeah. Customer only use it's the true store. cloud. Buy as you go, literally, yeah, this, or rent as you go. Yeah, exactly. And and it's not only just the financing model. It's also the management that we do. The customer don't need to understand about Zadara. They just need to mount the storage, either block storage or file or object, whatever protocol they want, and and use it. So which clouds are you not on? You're on. You mentioned two that obviously the big two. Yeah. Uh, Amazon Web Services and. Azure. What else? Are you on Google? Are you on other clouds? Uh, so we, cloud we, are, we are also partnered with many service providers and cloud providers that have our system in place, uh, like Korea Telecom, we have uh, uh, Equinix in, in Europe, uh, Dimension Data is using our system and reselling this to our customers. We are not currently present in, for the major clouds, only Google and IBM. And actually, we're talking to Google about uh, connecting our cloud to their cloud. So basically, once you basically certify, I'm going to use the word loosely, yeah. once you basically approve a connection and there's a relationship, then you're off to the races. Is that how it works? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and the main idea is that the customer put our, the data in the, our storage. They can use via the compute in the public cloud. They can use in the private cloud and they can replicate and move data easily between private and public as well. So where do you fit in with VMware now? I mean, VMworld, you're here, all your customers are here. I mean, is there a specific, because they don't have a yeah. cloud. Well, we have, we have many customers on-premise that use us uh, with the VMworld environment. VMware environment, we have a, a service providers and cloud providers that use VMware in their environment and we connect our cloud storage into VMware and we support all the SRM and all the... Uh, so it's more of an on-premise scenario on premise, here yeah. on this here, show. Here is more for on-premise solution. But still, at the end of the day, the customer pay per use, so it's still the, the same product. I'm interested in the practitioner angle. So we're here at VMworld, 23,000 folks who I guess you could safely say are kind of traditional IT, traditional enterprise applications and they have a certain skill set. They're used yeah. to a SAN, they're used to a NAS, they're yeah. used to now more direct attached storage and vSAN. Yeah. 
Is there a skills, a set of skills that they're going to have to learn to be able to uh, use Zadara in a multi-cloud environment? Uh, well, we provide also the management for the uh, our system. So the, we manage the system for the customer, even if it is on-premise. They, they don't need to manage uh, our system. So this is part of the, the um, capabilities of, of the advantage of using Zadara is because they can free up uh, their time to work on more strategic things. They can free up their money of the capex to build our, our, our stuff. They can free up the, the the time of the people to work on on our stuff. You know, deliver the application things that are more critical for the customer. Because you're delivering it as a service. Because so we are yeah, delivering yeah. it as a service. They right. don't they don't need to deal with uh, software upgrades and, and firmware upgrades and how to configure this, how to configure that. We are doing this uh, for the customer. But I can still think of it as a file store in the cloud that I can use. You, you, you think, uh, the customer think about us uh, as a mount point of, of uh, NFS or SIFs or, or block storage. We support uh, iSCSI, Fiber Channel. Uh, we support S3. Uh, something simple, something I already know. Yeah. Uh, you just it's get very, them. very yeah. easy to use, and our system look very much like a SAN or a NAS system. From, from the customer perspective. The only difference is, is coming from a distributed multi-tenant cloud, uh, and we do a really good job of separating the tenants between them and the workloads, so they, they feel that uh, they have the SLA of enterprise storage uh, capability. In, in your customer base, how are you seeing uh, people, we're here at VMware again, so vSphere usage, Obviously, if you're up on AWS, you're not using vSphere. Are people uh, running multiple hypervisors, your customers, or how are they, how are you, how are they approaching this new, uh, yeah. you know, the cloud world? Great question. So today, actually, we uh, did a, a press release of one of our um, big customers we have that is a, well, I think it's the largest university in Holland. Uh, they actually are, were traditional IT, and they were looking for traditional storage for traditional IT until they found us and they said, oh, I don't need to spend the million dollars that I have uh, ready to go and I don't need to uh, do any management or anything like that. They still have a big VMware environment, they have Exchange, they have all the traditional uh, applications, uh, if you wish, uh, but now we provide this as a service, the storage as a service, though, so they, they save a lot of money in CapEx, they save OPEX because they don't need to be you know dealing with the storage all the time, um, and they just using us uh, as as they will use a, a traditional storage. Where's the breakpoints now? And for, first, before we get to the uh, inside the customer environment, quickly talk about how many customers you have. What's some of the traction numbers? Can you yeah. share any data on the yeah. company's success? So, I mean, it's a new model. I'm assuming it's appealing. Yeah. So I, sometimes I'm surprised with the kind of customer we have. We have some uh, good use cases in the website, public use cases that, like uh, Deloitte, for example, or, or this uh, two university, and, and we have uh, like a dozen uh, of really good use cases. They are big enterprises that are using our system. And storage, I've been in the storage for many years, as <laughs> you know, and always people are very conservative when they go to something new. Uh, talk about some of, but talk about some of the numbers. Like, how big is the? Are you doing petabyte scale? I mean, yeah, what's some so of the usage? In terms of numbers, we are today about uh, 25 petabytes a year, uh, growing 25 petabytes a year. We, in terms of our growth in revenue, the Q2 we did 30 percent growth compared to Q1. Q1 25 percent to Q4. So we are in the monthly growth time. Uh, as opposed to you know year over year. And Do customers get worried that you know they use you and then all of a sudden they're using a lot of storage? Is there a break even? Is there a big bar in terms of uh, their benefit? I mean, at what level do they say, "Whoa, I should buy my own storage"? Or is that not an issue at this point? Uh, I think that if you if you take in the, in the analysis also the the resources that you save by not managing the storage, at the end of the day, we have a TCO calculator that show that we are always better than buying storage from day one even to year 10, okay? <laughs> because you need to take in account that you don't need to manage the storage, you don't need to migrate the storage from every four, four or five years. We have in our cloud system, we can ship new hardware, 
uh, to the customer. We have all the tools to rebalance the cloud, remove the old hardware. Uh, because it, it is as a service and we are responsible for the hardware, we have an interest in having the best hardware possible all the time. We have the uptime. Recovery, not a problem. No, right. So the, there's no such a thing as migration and things like that. So if you can't... Sounds too good to be true. I mean, really, it, 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 it it's is, one of those things where it's it like... Is, this is the reason why even large companies are adopting us, because they they save a lot of money. And, and I think that, uh, uh, and seeing the presentation to them from Pat, is, is, is the way that people are going to use in, in the future, right? Nobody wants to spend their resources doing uh, firmware upgrades or configuring fiber channel uh, LANs. You, you talked about replacing hardware. Uh, the big storage story, right, for the last few years has been flash, this transition from spinning disk to solid state. Yeah. It seems like you can ride on that wave uh, as uh, the cost curve changes and the capacity curve changes and the workloads of uh, your customers change. Yeah. How are you, how is, what is the Zadara story? In yeah, so cur flash? currently we support flash as one of the uh, workloads so customer can go to our console and say, I want flash storage mostly for performance play. Uh, however, we are working, and we, you will see announcements from us in November where we will have our summit in Irvine uh, that will be a little bit smaller than VMworld, but uh, still uh, a really good event. How many people show up to that event? Uh, we have hundreds of people in our event uh, with mostly customers, potential customers. And That's a customer event. Yes. For you guys. Yes, exactly. Do so you do your new announcements there? We will do announcements, especially on, on, the, on the Flash and Flash as a service, and you, you stay tuned. How, how does this get out to the marketplace? I mean, I mean, are you using the channel, and does the channel understand this sort of a, a hybrid a, implementation? Really good question. There are some channels that they, they understand that they need to move, but it's hard for them to move. They, they like the big checks <laughs> rather than the every month uh, recurring revenue. There are other people that they get it, and so I will say 100% of the people understand that they need to move at some point. Uh, maybe 50% or less, they are willing to move <laughs> because it's hard to, to you know, to forget the, the big checks that when you sell uh, hardware. But uh, but we see every year more and more uh, uh, people willing to to look at this, and our channel is less the traditional VAR and more of the service providers and cloud providers that we, they are our customers, but actually they are our partners. We, we, we form a partnership with them. We sell together to their customers and, and both of us are happy. Now, so talk about the company's growth strategy. How are you guys going to go forward? Because you're building all the infrastructure required for the hosting, but also you have a flexible model. Talk about how you guys are investing What's the growth strategy? What's your innovation strategy yeah. around that? Yeah, so in, in terms of growth, we, as I said, we, we continue to grow. Uh, we, for me especially, to keep ahead of the innovation is very important. I, I'm coming from the engineering side. I like to be on, on the edge and always announce new stuff and innovative stuff. Uh, so we, we invest in, in R&D and, and keep ahead of the curve. Also, remember, we are also cross-connected to Amazon, and we compete with Amazon on storage. That makes us to be, uh, force us to be very innovative very fast. You, yeah. you cannot. You have a lot of pressure because they're doing they a lot of things fast. fast. They are moving fast, and, and, and we are moving faster. <laughs> that, that, so we, we keep the uh, innovation. We do every year a major release with different uh, type of uh, new, new products. And also our strategy in terms of growth is to continue go back to our existing customers and offer additional services like uh, backup services, DR services, search services. Uh, you know, once we have the data, it's, it's easy for us to provision those services. And the customer go to the console and say, enable this, it will cost me this and that, and, and it is up and running. There's no need for, you know, another sell cycle or buy anything. Okay. What do you see about Amazon? Because Amazon is, again, a competitor on one level, but a big partner for you. Um, one, that must make you maybe attract a lot of engineers because it's super exciting uh, on that front. But, I mean, what, what, how does that, how does that uh, change the ecosystem? Because Amazon has a partnering strategy, but it's not so much 
partnering in the sense like VMware does. Yes. It's more of you draft off of Amazon's success, yes. less of direct partnering. Your thoughts on? Yeah, so uh, because we play the public and private cloud, uh, Amazon and VMware, <laughs> Amazon reInvent and VMware are the, our biggest shows, actually. And <laughs> each one, you, you are completely right. The, the partnership is different in both of them. Uh, but uh, our partnership with Amazon is, is really good. I mean, they, they are a fast-growing company. They they bring, uh, they want to expand the ecosystem. They understand that in some cases we compete. Uh, but but they're okay a, with that. It is, they are okay, and actually it forced their team also to keep uh, moving the bar. Uh, Amazon's got a good culture. They do a lot of innovation, but they're builders. They yeah. move fast. They move fast, and, and they, they I think they use the ecosystem sometimes to hide from us, we used to hide from them. You can <laughs> and, hide in the shadows. I yeah. really think, John, the, the a theme of this week might end up being multi-cloud, and, and yes. I think Zadara having like one foot in the private side and one foot on the public side, in fact, maybe a, a place where we're all headed. And in fact, you, you know, if, if you want to learn how to do that, uh, it's good to go to somebody who has that experience. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer, this kind of model. I'm just still trying to understand how it all works. So, I'm a customer. I buy a box or just buy your service? Oh, you, you, you put the service in a hosting center? I mean, can you just walk me through? I'm yeah. getting kind of down in the weeds, but. Yeah, so you go to zadarastory.com and create an account. And uh, basically there, once you have an account, you, you can choose where to provision the storage. And we have Amazon, Azure, other service providers like Dimension Data and so on. If you want in the public cloud. If you want in the private cloud, then you say, I, I want in the private cloud. And basically, one of our reps will call you immediately. You will, you will say, well, this is what I'm looking for. And we ship the hardware if it is on-prem. If it is in the public cloud, you click submit, it's up and running. There's no hardware touching no at all. No hardware, no... But if nothing. I'm an enterprise, you ship me a box. If, if you are in, in the on-premise, then we will ship not a box, multiple... Servers. Storage nodes and yeah. switches and hardware. everything. Hardware. Yeah. And you rack it, and our guys uh, can control this remotely, install the software, install everything. It's up and running. It's uh, the same cloud storage running on-premise. And you go to the same console and say, I, now I allocate, I don't know, 30 terabytes of Flash or, or SATA or whatever, and it is up and running immediately. You get an IP address. You so especially in management console. It's not so much storage. At all. We provide the storage. You can <laughs> we, do that too. We provide everything. The customer deal with us via management console. Yeah, so yeah, but, you, but on there, so I'm the customer. Just I'm on prem. You ship me some hardware. Yeah. You Is that storage? It, it, yeah, yeah, storage. It's, uh, That's all the storage. Super micro boxes, everything. Okay, yeah. got it there. And then I can still work with cloud storage. You still work multiple cross clouds, right? So you can have the on premise only, or you can have also in the cloud and you can replicate back and forth. Great. So you have. A, all the storage, everything on premise. The thing is that the interaction with us is very easy. You don't need, even yeah. need to talk to a sales people. You, you can if you want, but uh, you go to a console, yeah. allocate the storage. As one it's more of an architectural point. You've got to have a footprint. If they want the on prem piece, yes. you have to have a footprint. Then, then the initial footprint yeah. has a conversation, but once it is there, we monitor the system. At some point, we will, the whole thing. we will call you as a customer and say, hey, John, uh, you are using too much of this drive. We will ship you another box for free, and you just need to rack it. Uh, it's ready Good to go. To go. Yeah. For, for next time, you need to grow. And how's the fee feedback been from customers? The customers love it. Uh, the, the, main, the best feedback for me is when they consume more and more, right? So uh, the, the best feedback is not a quote, it's a paying, sending a check. This, this is the best feedback for me. Um, thanks for coming on, Nelson. Great to see you. A final question. What do you expect to do here this week? What do you expect to learn from VMworld this year? What's your thoughts on the show this week? Uh, so, we, we obviously, we have a, a booth that uh, we are, it's a good uh, place to recruit new customers. I was happy to hear the keynote speaking by Pat that the world is going in, in our direction. So, I think we will be in a in a really good position as, as this transition to a more mature uh, state that people start thinking globally about this. Great to see you, and will we see you at reInvent? Yes, definitely. The Cube will be there. In, in two months. <laughs> the Cube will be at Amazon and Web Services reInvent, again, consecutive years. Nelson, thanks so much. CEO of Zadara Storage here inside the Cube. I'm John Furrier, John Troyer, our analyst here from Tech Reckoning. 
Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with more live coverage. Three days wall-to-wall. -wall. We're in day one of VMworld. You're watching theCUBE.